A very warm welcome to part two of the 48th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. I hope you enjoyed the first edition, episode, part one, whatever you want to say. There is a lot of things in that. Uh, of course, we covered the UK record versus the CET or Central England temperature. And we discussed, of course, the several other Junes that proved to be warmer than 2003 with regards to the CET. That's quite interesting, of course, and it begs the question then, of course, if the UK record extended further back than, you know, 177 years, there probably would have been um, years gone by that were warmer than 2023, of course. We will never know for sure whether that's the case, but certainly it's just raising the question, of course, um, with regards to how you consider ever or on record and whatnot. In the second video here today, I want to look a little bit about big turnarounds with regards to drought versus plentiful rain. Now, of course, we're coming off the back of a three-year La Nina, which typically, in my opinion, has a drier shadow effect over the UK and indeed Europe overall. And we've seen a tremendous example of how when perma drought or extreme drought worsened in a thousand years, etc., 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 is is talked about. How often do we then see a big flip around? It's as if Mother Nature turns around and says, "Right, okay, I've heard enough of this. I'm going to change, and we'll go the other way." Now, what's interesting is I want to draw your attention to Spain and California, two, uh, two dry areas anyway. But when you throw in drier through you know, natural variability. Of course, a lot of hype is then attached to, you know, particular dry spells. But, you know, we've got hundreds of years of examples of how we see these fluctuations in rainfall distribution going from sparse to plentiful. And the winter of 2022-2023 is a classic example of what happens and how nature can turn things around. Now, we've seen that last year. The above images are of before the winter, last year versus after the winter. And isn't that an astonishing turnaround between the arid conditions across the north versus, you know, 100% um, full reservoirs across a broad area of California? And we're only 5% of the state in drought conditions as of today. So that, of course, puts California in a very good state, even when the temperature finally does uh, rise. And we're expecting that to take place, of course. Very hot Mexico, where it's been exceptionally dry through the spring and early portion of the summer, we've seen record break temperatures. Not a national record, but we've seen hot conditions. Of course, the Mexican record is over 50 Celsius. We've not seen that this year. So let's also keep that in mind. But California has had one of the coolest dunes in recorded history. Is it possibly a side effect of the incredible amounts of water that's now in the ground? Possibly. Remember, we're entering the driest part of the, the, the year anyway, but we're looking very good. And of course, let's keep that in mind when a heat wave does eventually come to California. Let's just keep everything in perspective. But what a turnaround we've seen there. Spain has seen tremendous drought conditions of late. Then came May 2023, flash flooding and tremendous amounts of rain. Now, I did look through some uh, some stuff. 2019, 2020, we've seen heavy rain events. We've seen drought conditions. We've seen wet conditions. And, of course, this is the time of the year you would typically see very little, if any, rain in Spain. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting, of course, very dry conditions across the British Isles. We're now seeing a turnaround here also. So uh, very interesting stuff indeed. Now, this is the off my J July outlook. So do check that out if you haven't already done so. There is a lot of information available for you to look at. I was actually hoping to cut the grass and I think that's the rain on typical, isn't it? 
what a different pattern we've got in the UK compared to what we've seen, of course, uh, in June and even in May. Now, this is an interesting one here. So this is directly off the article that I produced. This is the CFSV2 uh, rainfall forecast for, uh, for, for Europe. And you can see here that it's a wet north, dry south. This is for the entire month of July, of course. Now, remember, you typically don't see much rain in Spain at this time of the year. Look at Spain. We're seeing wetter than average conditions across a large area of this fairly sizable peninsula. Only the northwest corner is drier than average. It's either average to above average across the entire area of of uh, of Iberia. You know, just that left hand corner, north uh, northwest corner, is drier than average. That's for the month of July. How is, how is August looking? Now, isn't it interesting that we do have happen to have strongest high pressure east and north? So that certainly would indicate a fairly dry setup even here in the UK and Ireland. Temperature normally wise, it looks as if it's marginally above average across Iberia. But precipitation wise, let's have a look and see at this. Wetter than average. So it's indicating a wetter than average summer down in this region of the world and after a very, very wet May. So this, along with California, is a stark example of how nature tries to equal the balance. And again, it's all about perspective. This is the two, uh, temperatures across the continent, fairly warm, but of course it's the 2nd of July. You would expect to see that. Temperatures knocking the door of 40 across the oven of Spain, the south-central portion of Spain, that is typical. Now, this is the upcoming 30 days of the ECMWF. And you can see here that we've got a fairly warm overall pattern according to the ECMWF weeklies. So this is the upcoming period between the 1st and the 31st of July. It looks as if it's quite warm across Greenland after seeing cold and the increase in the... I kept saying the Greenland surface mass budget, but it's actually... the uh, the, the surface mass balance, I believe it is. So I think I'm, I'm, I need to correct that one. But you, can, you know, increase in snowfall. Speaking of snowfall, let's have a look and see what it's shown. So this is, of course, the upcoming 30 day period. And if I can try and get to the right chart, because I have that many here, I do apologize for that. Uh, let me just see here for a little second. And see if I can get to the very this is the current sea surface temperatures, by the way. And you can see here extremely warm. Sea of Japan up into the northwest corner of a, a region that I can't remember the name of the sea, unfortunately. Warm pool over the North Pacific. We've got this a uh, region of very cool waters extending off California and towards uh, Hawaii, as you can see here. Australia is interesting, by the way. We're seeing that a little bit more warming across the eastern, far eastern equatorial Pacific, but a cold PDO versus El Nino developing can actually put the brakes on us slightly. This development, warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, of course, are going to boost temperatures this month, probably through the remainder of this year, in fact, across this region here. So let me see here. Uh, let me just see. So snowfall, Greenland. This is the upcoming period of the GFS. And you can see here, this is Greenland, North America, of course. Plenty of heat across Canada to speak about. But tremendous amounts of snowfall, as you can see here, over the vast area of Greenland through the middle and second half, right the way through to the 18th of July. So the upcoming 18 days is rather snowy looking over a large swathe of Greenland, despite the fact that the ECMWF has it warmer than average here. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff, of course. So uh, let me see here what else we can look at here in terms of what's going on. 850 temperature anomalies, by the way, are quite interesting. So warmer than, warmer versus colder than average. And it is pretty 50-50 across the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. This is off the GFS. So this is the 850 or the 5,000 foot level temperature anomaly. And you can see here plenty of reds, but plenty of blues at the same time. UK bathed in blue, as you can see. So you can see this little swathe, this little push of warm air into the British Isles, followed by a push of colder than average air. Of course, this is the UK and Ireland right here. 
and you can see here cold extending from southern Greenland through Iceland and through the UK and Ireland here through the next week or so here it looks as if we are going to see waves of cold coming down from the west in from the west down from the north then we're going to see this little intrusion of hotter air coming off Iberia France into the British Isles followed by another push of colder than average air at 850 as you can see here plenty of warmth over Greenland but there's plenty of cold areas versus warm areas around the northern hemisphere and we'll just have to kind of keep that in perspective here UK just kind of seeing these back and forth between you know with low pressure driving the pattern at the moment what we see is uh, these areas of low pressure then swing cool fresher in ahead of these areas of low pressure we see these surges of warmth coming up from the north uh, up from the south sorry into the UK here but it looks as if all the way through uh, you know, right the way through to about the 18th of July, we're going to have this back and forth set up similar, but not exactly, but similar to the type of July we've seen back in 2015, which I think is quite interesting, actually. So let's have a look and see what's been going on around the world in the last week or so here, because um, there has been a lot, of course, Canadian wildfire smoke, big story, of course. Uh, with a strong address stream crossing the Atlantic, we've been seeing that air, you know, in the upper levels mixed with with smoky air coming off Canada, entrained within the jet stream and blowing across uh, anywhere across Western Europe from southern Spain all the way up into the British Isles, of course, which is quite interesting. The um also what's quite interesting is the uh, the situation with regards to the monsoon season. And it looks as if it's arrived uh, and covered the entire subcontinent of India six days ahead of schedule, despite the fact that it was quite a slow start. And places such as Cherrapunji and adjacent areas, during the month of June, we've seen well over a thousand millimeters, which is close to average for the month of June in the far north of India. So this monsoon season is actually doing pretty decent this year. We also may see a low person up into Maya Pradesh uh, later on in the week here because we do have quite a warm Indian Ocean versus average and it's an active pattern at the moment here so we're going to get the help the kick from areas of, of low pressure either in the Bay of Bengal or the Arabian Sea that push up enhancing the rainfall that we're already seeing but certainly El Nino typically uh, kind of weakens the, the monsoon circulation at the moment anyway it is doing pretty well with regards to the overall situation uh, in india and indeed pakistan remember we looked at what the temperature normally were it has been a cold and average year overall this is uh, the first couple of days of july by the way plenty of areas of cold on that chart versus warm you can see a very warm northern portion of north america much of north america in fact warmer than average the very areas that have actually been hottest so parts of texas we're actually seeing slightly below average temperatures across North Texas into the eastern uh, front range of the Rockies, central plain states, but we've got plenty of warm surrounding. Australia's had a very cold start of July, by the way, northern portions of India, Pakistan, western China uh, has been cold compared to average versus the east, central parts of Russia, 50-50 across Africa, as you can see here, warmer than average, probably reflection of the El Nino of course developing in the eastern Pacific warmer than average across much of uh, South America as you can see and even for the UK it has been a, a below average start of the month of July but we'll see what happens I expect to see warmer conditions developing uh, through the course of uh, July of course and let's have a quick rattle through all these tweets I actually did have this set up but unfortunately I've missed the space so I do apologize for that here. I know I'm skipping through it rather fast. Sorry about that. Of course, the Arctic not doing too bad with regards to the sea ice extent versus a pretty poor Antarctica. But again, a little bit of balance going on here. Very, very heavy rains, upwards of 250 millimeters of rainfall in a six hour period, according to this tweet by Jim Yang in parts of China flash flooding uh, situation across this region um, like I showed you before cold in the north versus the south of Australia Death Valley still to hit uh, 120 for the first time this year Perth in western Australia by the way had um, uh, its coldest night in 7 years that's quite interesting 
Uh, Ryan Mao tweets here below average June overall, which is quite interesting. Temperatures near minus 80 across parts of Central Antarctica. I've run out of time. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned. See you again tomorrow. Please like.